Hello from uh, Trend Signal for a review of the data and events of the week uh, beginning the 7th of September. Uh, today uh, is a holiday in the United States. It's Labor Day. In fact, it's not just a holiday in the United States, it's also a holiday in Canada. The uh, American labor movement celebrating Workers' Day uh, that have provided strength, prosperity, and well being for their country. Um, Canada, ditto. Curiously enough, um, most other countries do it all on May the 1st. I think US and Canada are pretty much out on their own, really. Uh, UK uh, do, does have a Labour Day on the 1st of May, but it's not an official holiday. It's uh, just a day when the unions celebrate Workers' Day, uh, really. Um, so whilst it's a public holiday today and liquidity levels will probably be quite low uh, as normal when the US is on holiday, we expect normal levels of liquidity to return tomorrow which sort of typically marks the end of the summer break for the financial markets, as it were. So really, that's been going on since uh, beginning of July, but uh, uh, August is particularly quiet. Uh, we expect everyone to be back at their desks, really, from uh, tomorrow. So um, markets, uh, having got over some of the Chinese angst, some of the non-farm payroll angst, uh, European markets are higher on Monday morning. Uh, although with uh, Labor Day, as I've just said, liquidity will be a lot lower. Uh, the Standard & Poor's rebounding 17-odd points after Friday afternoon's sell-off. For the record, non-farm payroll last Friday missed uh, but was robust enough, is the reflection from most commentators. Uh, employers added uh, 173,000 workers in August, which was largely offset by the adjustment to July's figures, uh, which were increased to 245,000 from 215,000. So why the sell-off? Um, probably the idea that the Fed's decision on a rate rise this month is too close to call. Uh, plus, I, I think uh, equities are really in a sort of glass half empty mode uh, for now. Um, the headline in most media outlets, though, was that the jobless rate had dropped to 5.1%, a, a level which uh, the Federal Reserve considers to be full employment. In fact, that rate is 5%, but it's pretty close. Uh, if you remember that the Federal Reserve has actually got two mandates, one uh, to foster full employment, another one to maintain price stability, which is often referred to as the dual mandate, which is different to the, for example, to the Bank of England here in the UK, which has the sole mandate to uh, maintain price stability. So, what about the path of US interest rates? Uh, it's that will they, won't they question. Friday's data has just provided the market with more uncertainty, I suppose. Um, the data was not clear enough, one way or the other, to rule in or rule out uh, a rate hike uh, this month. Um, one of the FOMC members, William Dudley from the New York Fed, uh, suggested a week ago that uh, rates should not rise, and so we obviously know which way he's voting. And then we had um, Richmond President uh, Jeffrey Lacker on Friday, who's always has been advocating for a rate hike for some time now, said it uh, unequivocally, it is time to raise rates. So it's that burning question. Uh, the um, Fed meeting on the 17th of September, culminating on the 17th of September, all will become clear. It uh, could be quite an interesting uh, week or couple of days, Thursday, Friday, next week, with um, quarterly expiry uh, as well on the Friday. Um, China, well, that's the first time uh, we mentioned China, really. The data releases continue to feed concerns that the slowdown in China could lead to a hard landing. Um, Beijing has slightly revised down its growth estimates. I think there's a headline here on Market Watch from 7.4 to 7.3 for 2014. And I think it just highlights concerns about the world's la uh, second biggest economy. Um, most economists actually believe that Chinese growth is somewhere near the 5% anyway, rather than the 7% reported by the state. But the fact the state is downgrading it um, is interesting. So, um, a lot of other things going on in the markets as well, with movements in the Aussie dollar, obviously affected by the um, Chinese move. Uh, uh, Japanese yen, which is typically a safe haven uh, in the Far East, that's rallied sharply during the China uh, Fed angst. Um, and obviously we had uh, Mario Draghi last uh, Thursday reinforcing the commitment to QE uh, and keeping to the task. I think the euro slumped uh, 
on the back of it, it slumped, it sold off relatively sharply. Bunds rallied uh, as well as markets priced in the news. Lower growth, continued QE program. Really, the ECB are keen to counter the effects of the recent Renminbi devaluation, amongst other things, as both powers attempt to counter deflation and encourage growth, um, similar to really what's happening in Japan. Uh, not everyone can achieve those same goals, uh, of course. Uh, let's have a look at the data this week. It is a lighter calendar following on from the deluge of non-farm payroll uh, and employment data generally, etc. last week. We've got rate decisions in Canada, the New Zealand and the UK, um, and employment data there uh, in Australia. So let's just have a look. Obviously, it's a holiday on Monday, so very little uh, going on on Monday. Probably the most important bits of data for the UK markets will be manufacturing production on Wednesday at 9.30. And of course, the reports now that have been merged from the Monetary Policy Committee, so that's the Rate Setting Committee, the interest rate decision on Thursday at 12.30, the minutes from the uh, vote, um, and obviously the MPC statement. So uh, uh, a combination of everything. Uh, for the now, uh, the markets have, pri have priced in uh, less dissent in the uh, votes, uh, 108. Um, so if anything, uh, looking at sterling, it would almost suggest that uh, uh, the market is now uh, pricing in uh, stable rates now probably until the middle of next year, which... Uh, I suspect might change at some stage if uh, the Federal Reserve raises rates. So um, other than that, for the U.S. markets, probably the most important data is the PPI on Friday, the producer price index on Friday. Uh, really, there is no inflation in the pipeline whatsoever. This is a really a sort of a leading indicator of inflation, uh, to a certain extent, the price of producer price index. And then... Um, University of Michigan consumer sentiment. We always keep a weather eye on the, the consumer in the United States, which drives the economy, really. But uh, to say they are a happy bunch is probably an understatement at the moment. Uh, probably uh, another bit of data that could upset the markets this time tomorrow is the trade balance from China. Uh, that could uh, produce some interesting headlines um, tomorrow morning. I remember, with the U.S. shut uh, today, um, if there is a significant move today or tomorrow, that obviously could lead to an interesting move in the U.S. Um, let's wait and see. But for now, the markets are relatively stable. First thing Monday morning, um, albeit uh, quietened due to the uh, Labor Day holiday in the United States. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, bye for now. If you would like more information about trading the right way, TrendSignal is giving you the opportunity to see and hear about its services live at a free online seminar. Take a look at the TrendSignal website for the latest events and to book your free place.